if you don't mind me getting a little bit political for a second. Uh oh. Um, uh -oh. Well, <laughs> you you both are are Muslims mm -hmm. and. Trump obviously has been very vocal. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. How does he make you guys feel? Are you scared for a potential Trump presidency? Are you scared for our country? How do you, how do you feel? <laughs> it's entertaining. I mean, it's unfortunate that he feels like he has to entertain people like that. I mean, he's an entertainer. I don't really take him that seriously. Even now, when he's so close to the presidency? Well, n no, because hmm, this is very simplistic, but it's gonna be what it is. And if we're in a country that would elect someone like that president, then that's another issue. It's less about Trump mm -hmm. and more about the people. So I'm not really, there's always been demagogues. There's always been people who, uh, you know, Trump's a, a small little man who inherited money and is playing with his daddy's money. I mean, we've seen that over and over. But if the American people are willing to uh, elect someone like that president, then that's more of the problem than Trump. In terms of his, his opinions about Muslims, I mean, He's, again, he's a racist, a xenophobe. I mean, if you just break out the, the big word uh, definitions or words that define someone who is a racist, and you can point to him. So we've seen racist before. I mean, this whole conversation about uh, ISIS, well, I don't think the young man who shot those, young, those people in the church not so long ago was in ISIS. I don't think the young man who shot all the people in the movie theater was an ISIS. I don't think the young man who shot everyone up at Sandy Hook was an ISIS. So, you know, you can play these games, but I choose not to sort of tap into uh, the popular vernacular and the popular sort of package that, sh that people tend to put these things in. I think we really have to examine ourselves as people in the media to and ask ourselves how did we allow someone like this to keep saying the things that he said about women about mexicans about blacks about anybody that about you can muslims? think of about muslims and we really allowed and legitimized that by having serious conversations about it you know what i mean imagine if he was saying the same things about jews I mean, that comparison has been made a lot in terms imagine, of him being Hitler. Imagine, yeah. you know, imagine if he was saying the same things about Jews. I don't even think that we would be having these conversations about what he is and what he isn't. So right. what's that thing? You know, they come for us first, and then after they get us, who are they going to come for next? So I hope people are awake. We've mentioned earlier you've addressed a lot of things in, in your work that has been more political. Black Lives Matter, uh, gay and lesbian issues. Do you have any intention of like addressing Trump or beyond Trump, just this sort of growing xenoph xenophobia? The anger the that's in our country? Yeah, the anger yeah. In, in, in your work within Always. WB. And Whatever, you can't separate that out yeah. of us. I you think that can't. before I met Salim, you said individuals. It's funny, I think one of the things that has drawn us to each other in our marriage and just our partnership is that that's just a part of who he is, it's a part of who I am. And I, I don't separate those things out of, of me as a writer, as a producer, as a person, as a mother, as a wife. It's just who I am. And I think, you know, we, we hear these phrases, you know, just do it, just be yourself. And that is a part of being yourself. I don't know how you take the, you know, the politics out of it. I do love mostly expressing it in my art form, mm -hmm. you know, and talking and preparing our children for the world. You know, yeah. um, I, I, I do mostly in those areas, you know, and as far as being a Muslim, you know, being a Muslim is a believer. You know, where I am in my spiritual practice as well is that often things that look scary are sometimes our biggest blessing. And so I, in this moment, I'm very, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> We're thinking deeper about it is um, having been a journalism major, having been trained by one of the best 
you know, educated by one of the best journalism schools in the country. Were you Medill. Northwestern? Yeah. I went to Northwestern. You too. did? I did. What's up, Wildcat? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, I, I feel something went wrong, and we are to blame. We are the fourth pillar. You know, there, there is a lot of that blame, but it also, to Salim said, I, we have to look deeper. And I think as writers, that is just would be a natural interest to me to try to figure out how to articulate in the work. Um, but whatever this is, I try now to look at it like what is the greater lesson? And if the greater lesson means we have more work to do to be better at what we do. Mm. I mean, it's laughable. I mean, the idea that people are actually sitting on supposedly educated people or sitting on television asking the question, well, is Trump a misogynist? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, do you really, I mean, I mean, these are really intelligent people. Yeah. And to, a, to have to ask, well, is he a racist? You really, and so to me, it's, it, it just shows you sort of the, uh, the closeness that the media has with celebrity. It's like, we don't want to say what he really is because that means we would have to not put him on television and that means our ratings would go down. Right. You have someone who is barring certain news organizations from actually covering his campaign and the news media will not say anything about it other than, oh, that's one more outlet that they won't allow yeah. to cover his campaign. But then they have these questions. And so when I see it, it's like, wow, man, you spent a lot of time getting your hair done and your makeup is fabulous, it's and you're orange. posing. <laughs> and I'm talking to, I'm talking about the newscasters. Oh, oh the newscasters. Okay, like, some of them are orange too. Your, <laughs> you know, your hair is done, your your tie is tied, and your teeth are white, and you look fantastic. But journalism, no, you're not even close to it. I can't imagine Ted Koppel sitting there having a conversation the way that these guys have conversations with uh, Trump. I just can't. They actually let him call in. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's it's amazing. But and that that know. because it creates. But then, enough of him because I don't want to give too yeah, much. Yeah, but because it creates an opportunity for our, you know, that's the we all have a role, and I think as artists, and I do think that we're artists for commerce. But I think the this the and I know you have to ask the question, and I get the context because we're Muslims. But I think the more attention you give someone like that, it's just fuel. Well, I look forward to seeing you I guys. I have my passport. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> Dubai, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank guys. You. Thank really you. Thank you.